Please rise as you are able and face the rear of the church towards the processional cross.
Jesus Christ is risen today. What a glorious Easter morning as we gather together to celebrate that the tomb is empty and that he is risen. He is risen in me. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God, you gave your son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die each day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through our, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Easter celebration comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning with the first verse. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe. Here ends the first reading. Oh, 
The Easter Gospel according to Mark. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, that he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb with trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God, the word of life. Grace and peace, wonder, hope, and joy be with you today from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. So I'm going to ask you a question. And I don't want you to answer by with your voice, but instead, on your way in, you were each given a little finger puppet. Time to get them out. Yes, pastor had something planned. So get out your little finger puppet. And what I'd like you to do is to answer this question by if you have the right finger puppet, raise it up. Now, some of you might recognize and know each one of these just by looking at the front of it. However, if you would like to cheat, you're welcome to look in the back where it has the name of each character there listed. So I would like for you to raise up if you have the character that has risen today. Hey, I'm seeing some. Look, oh, look, who is this? 
Who is this? It's Jesus. That's right. Jesus has risen today. God who dwelled with, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. God who dwelled with us, became fully human, experienced all the challenges of this world. And today we celebrate because they go to his tomb and he's empty. He's raised. Jesus is risen. That's why we're all here today, right? Jesus is risen. But let me ask a question. You can put Jesus down. <laughs> Where does that leave the rest of us? What about all the people that didn't have Jesus? Where does today leave everybody else? Take, for instance, I want you to raise, raise it up. If you have this character, if you have Noah, raise up Noah. Noah, the choir thinks that this looks like Pastor Bell. <laughs> yeah, raise up Noah. You've got Noah, right? Noah, Noah, a character from the Old Testament who witnessed a lot of loss and went through a lot of ridicule and challenge. There's Noah. Where does Easter leave Noah? Or, or you know what? Let, let's go to the next one. We've got, we've got Joseph. Now, now, if you're looking and reading on the back, this is the Joseph with the really fancy, colorful coat, not the other one. Raise up Joseph. If you got Joseph, let it see it. Okay, what about Joseph? Joseph, who, who really was falsely accused and was in prison, where does Easter leave, leave Joseph? Then how about, how about if you have Sarah? I gotta find my Sarah. Who has Sarah? Who, who has Sarah? Raise up Sarah. Sarah laughed at God, right? You're gonna have a child. She's like, no, nah, I'm too old. She laughed at him. Where does Easter leave Sarah? How about, how about we got Moses? And I think I dropped my Moses. Yeah, he's on. Holding the tablets. Come on, raise up Mo Moses if you got him. Moses, who led all the people, the Israelites, out of captivity. But then he decided he was angry at a rock, so he hit it, and he wasn't able to enter the promised land. Where does Easter leave Moses? Then we've got, let's see, who do we have? Ruth! Ruth! Ruth, a wonderful character in Scripture. Raise up if you've got her. Yeah, she saved her people, but she was a little bit deceptive in doing it, but she did the good thing. You know, Ruth, yeah, good person. Where does Easter leave Ruth? Or, or next, you know what, we're going to put these two together because they're a couple. We've got the other Joseph, not the one with the fancy coat, and Mary. Yeah, these, the parents of Jesus who lost their child? Where does Easter leave them? How about, how about we go on and, and we see, you see Peter. Peter, who experienced God. Yeah, raise him up if you've got him. Peter. Peter, who, who walked alongside Jesus, but also betrayed his friend. How about, how about we've got, what else? John. John, this beloved disciple who saw his best friend somebody who he cared about, crucified. Wow, where does Easter leave John? Or we've got Martha. Martha, who in the story is too busy to hang out with Jesus. Where does Easter leave Martha? Or, or, or Lazarus, this mummy-looking guy. <laughs> Lazarus. Lazarus, who everybody had written off as dead, put in a tomb, wanted to move on with their life. Where does Easter leave Lazarus? Or, or that, that first reading, Paul. Paul gave us that reading from Corinthians who, who had a very complicated past that he would really like to forget. Where does Easter leave Paul? Jesus is risen. But what about them? They experienced God, but they also experienced pain. They experienced torment. They experienced a little bit of regret. They experienced the weight of past mistakes. They experienced the harshness of this world in all the ways that it could come. They experienced complicated and challenging relationships. Where does Easter leave them? But that's the true joy of Easter. We're tempted. And sometimes we forget and think that it's just Jesus that's risen. But because Jesus is risen, all of these others rise as well. They all rise above the challenges of this world that they experienced and went through. 
Because see, now I want to see, now I'm going to ask this question. Who is risen this day? Show me. Yeah, everybody, everybody's risen, right? Right, Noah's risen, right? And then, and Joseph's risen. No, keep them right, keep them up, come on. Easter doesn't just happen for a moment, and then Sarah's risen, right? And, and Moses is risen, and Ruth's risen, and Mary's risen, and Joseph's risen, and we have what? Peter, and John, and Martha, and Lazarus, and Paul, they've all risen. You should all have your hands in the air, right? Right, and did I forget anybody? Did I forget anybody? Anybody who's been shown the grace of God through the resurrected of Jesus Christ? Wait, I forgot somebody. You can all put yours down. I did forget somebody. Forgot somebody that's highlighted in that reading that Mark gave us from 1 Corinthians, because there's a part in there where it says, now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. Easter sees Jesus risen. Easter sees all the faithful that have become immortalized in Scripture risen. But so too are we risen. So too are we risen from hopelessness into hope, from anguish and despair into peace and life, out of a process of trying to earn God's favor to instead receiving God's grace. Where death doesn't get the last laugh, but instead, through Christ, we know life now and know life eternally. We have risen, too. In a few moments, we're going to sing one of my favorite Easter hymns, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. And in it, when you get to the refrain, it goes, Jesus is risen and we shall arise. That's not empty words. Those aren't just pretty lyrics. No, those are a promise to claim and an invitation to practice. And so now, let's practice that. I would like to see who has all risen today. So raise up your little characters, but also we raise up ourselves. Because Easter is about how we all rise. Easter is found in the joy that he is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he has, we shall also. Amen.
gathered together as God's risen people and with all people across the world, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, for in all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ here in Coronationville and in all places where the church is persecuted, protected, where it is fractured, heal it. We pray for your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life that together we may proclaim Easter hope. We pray for all people and all nation, free communities from occupation, exploitation and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all those who serve our nation and communities. We pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope people struggling to make it through each day. And bless those who are sick with your healing. We pray for Good Shepherd, for your spirit in our midst. Fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your amazing love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with those around you.
Please rise. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with your blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to everlasting life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory, for Come to the table of the risen Christ where all are welcome. Thank you. 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.